Hi, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm OZ Hall. Today we'll be looking at the Bode Frequency Shifter. Behringer recently released the Bode Frequency Shifter as part of their System 55 series. There are a number of frequency shifters available on the market in both Eurorack and 5U slash Moog unit format. Generally, this video will apply to all of them. But before we get into that, let me introduce you to the designer of the Moog Bode frequency shifter, Harold Bode. Harold Bode was born at the beginning of the 20th century in Germany. He was trained as an engineer. He was also a musician. He was a pioneering designer in the world of musical instruments. He didn't invent the frequency shifter circuit. He did design the Bode frequency shifter. This design was used by Moog and became the Moog Bode frequency shifter which introduced the modular world to this instrument. This video will be presented in two parts. Number one, what does a frequency shifter do? It's helpful to understand some conceptual background to fully understand the operation and application for a frequency shifter. We'll tell you what you need to know. Number two, how can I use the Moog Bode frequency shifter musically? In the 1974 data sheet for the Moog Bode frequency shifter, there are seven applications suggested. We'll demonstrate all of them. By the way, check the description for this video for a link to that 1974 data sheet. Now let's get started. What does a frequency shifter do? In researching for this video, I referenced a great article from Perfect Circuit. I'll put a link in the description to that article. If you already understand the harmonic series and ring modulators, feel free to skip forward to the frequency shifter chapter. The harmonic series is a group of sine waves with a special arithmetic relationship between their frequencies. The first harmonic in a series is also called the fundamental frequency. The rest of the harmonics are called overtones. The frequencies of the overtones are integer multiples of the fundamental frequency. We'll call the harmonics H1, H2, H3, and so on. Let's look at an example with the following table where H1 is the fundamental with a frequency of 100 Hz. Harmonic 1 is 100 Hz. Harmonic 2 is 200 Hz, which is 100 times 2. H3 is 300 Hz, or 100 times 3. Let's hear this with a filter sweep with high resonance. We'll use a sawtooth waveform because it contains all the harmonics in the series. You may be familiar with the sound of a ring modulator. It's used for inharmonic sounds like bells and gongs. A ring modulator accepts two input signals, a program and a carrier. Assume that both of these input signals are sine waves. The program is at a fixed frequency of 100 Hz. The carrier is at a frequency of 50 Hz. The output does not contain the program frequency, 100 Hz. It does contain the sum of the frequencies, i.e. 100 Hz plus 50 Hz, 150 Hz, and the difference of the frequencies, that is 100 Hz minus 50 Hz equal 50 Hz. If you added the program to the output of the ring modulator, you would have the following frequencies, 50 Hz, the difference, 100 Hz, the program, 150 Hz, the sum. You may have noticed that this is, in fact, a harmonic series with the fundamental being 50 Hz. This is one octave below the frequency of the program, 100 Hz. The frequency shifter is similar to the ring modulator. The main difference is that the sum and difference outputs are separated to two output jacks. 
the program signal goes to the signal in jack on the frequency shifter. The carrier signal is an internal VCO with sine wave output. The frequency of the internal VCO is referred to as the shift amount. This shift amount is controlled manually by the amount of shift knob, i.e. VCO coarse tune, and zero adjust, i.e. VCO fine tune. The shift amount is also controllable from three control input jacks. This module shifts the frequency of an audio signal by adding a shift frequency, shift amount, to the frequency of the incoming signal, the program. This creates the sum of the frequencies of the signal input and the VCO. The sum is available at output A. This represents the sum half of a normal ring modulator output. It also shifts the frequency of an audio signal by subtracting a shift frequency, shift amount, from the frequency of the incoming signal, the program. This creates the difference of the frequencies of the signal input and the VCO. The difference is available at output B. This represents the difference half of a normal ring modulator output. Outputs A and B are also available at the mix output with a crossfader called mixture. If equally mixed, this is the same as the output of a normal ring modulator. Also note that all of the VCO frequency controls go through a scale switch. This six position switch will scale and route the control inputs in one of three ways. First, at the zero position, there's no control at all. This is useful for calibration. Second, the exponential position, EXP, this is for one volt per octave exponential frequency control of the internal VCO, the carrier. And three, there are four different ranges of linear frequency control of the VCO. They're labeled 5, 5 hertz, 50, 500, and 5,000. Finally, there is a squelch control. This is effectively a noise gate which will mute the output if the input signal falls below the squelch threshold level. How is a frequency shifter different from a pitch shifter? A pitch shifter shifts all frequencies proportionally to maintain the frequency relationship of the harmonics to each other. In this case, a sawtooth waveform shifted up by an octave by a pitch shifter still has the harmonic content of a sawtooth waveform. By contrast, a frequency shifter shifts each harmonic by a fixed frequency. The upper harmonics become inharmonic as the frequency is shifted. This is why a signal with strong harmonics becomes clangorous when shifted. So that's part one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified when part two becomes available.